So first off, your My Operations app should have automatically updated to the Op Center mobile app. But if it didn't, you may have to go to your Google Play Store or your Apple App Store, find Op Center Mobile, and click the Update button. Another thing you could do, and probably the best thing to do, would be to go to your uh, download the John Deere App Center. So that's John Deere App Center. Um, I'm going to open that. And the John Deere App Center has all of the apps that John Deere puts out and uh, an easy way to download and, and go to them quickly. So we can uh, download them here. It's going to show the latest version number for you as well. So I can click on that go right beside Operation Center Mobile and I land in the app. So the first thing we see at the top of the screen is a uh, seating progress, 2020 seating progress. So this little progress bar that that pops up whenever you're in the middle of an operation. Um, it's going to it's just kind of looking at all the boundaries and and it's saying that we haven't quite seated everything that we have boundaries for in 2020. So that's why it's saying we're not done with 2020 seating yet. Um, if we scroll back here on the scroll up here on the works, this is a chronological uh, work here. So we can see that back in October is where we had the corn and soybean harvest going on, and we can go even further than that. Um, on the, you can also uh, look at a specific date and filter that uh, if you wanted to. Uh, notifications would be notifications coming from your JD Link enabled machines. So these are all the important notifications coming at you here. And uh, that is pretty much the home screen here. I'm going to come back to it a little bit later. So the next thing we're going to do is go to the map, the map tab at the bottom. And on the map screen, we see that we can uh, uh, see our basically our basic map with boundaries, machines, and flags. We can click on any of those if we wanted to. I'm going to pay attention to the uh, I'm going to pay attention to the black bar at the bottom of the screen there. That first button would be a zoom to where you're at in the world. Um, the next button would be uh, settings for the map, so we can turn on and off machines or uh, field boundaries if we wanted to. We can also switch from satellite to streets or to hybrid like I have here. Um, and uh, the third button is where we would add flags. Uh, using uh, through the app, we could manually add a flag to the field to a field. And the last button is a quick way to go to any of the farms or the equipment. So let's take, for example, here that uh, S780 there. I can click on that S780. I can roll up on the screen to see more information about that S780, like engine hours, uh, separator hours, fuel. Uh, I can get directions to it. I use that quite often. Uh, I personally use that quite often to find you guys in the field. And we use RDA all the time. So I can click on RDA. And if somebody was in that S780, they'd be getting a notification right now that I'm trying to view their screen. And and I'm going to be able to see uh, the screen. We use that all the time on the Remote Support Center to uh, help you guys out. It's a quick way to see what you're seeing. But you can also use that uh, personally on your farm too. Um, hit X to get out of there. And uh, next thing I'm going to do is click on a field. So that east half there. So it shows up the last uh, shows up with the last operation that we did on that east half field. And that was a uh, corn harvest. So we can see more information about that corn harvest here. Um, all the agronomic information is down here. We actually had a strip trial, strip trial on there. So we can see all the different hybrids that were planted. And um, yeah, similarly, we have directions to that field, or if I wanted to share that with somebody, I can hit share here. And I can say that I wanted to share that with Gabe, and I can hit share there, hit go. And now Gabe is getting that uh, yield file and and maybe you, so maybe you want to send that uh, to your agronomist, or maybe you want to send that to your seed guy. Uh, send a yield map or a planting map with it. Um, maybe you just want to brag to a neighbor. That's a quick way to do it. Um, next thing we're going to do is get back into that field. And you can also quickly go to the Analyze button at the bottom there. So that View, Harvest, and Analyze, we can, go, we can just zoom to that field 
in the Analyze app. And uh, that basically got me to the Analyze app here. And I'm in that east half field now where we have our strip trial. Now, this is going to work very similar to how the Analyze, uh, the Analyze app works on your, uh, on your, uh, on your website. Um, the problem with using it on a phone is we have a tall, screeny, tall, a tall skinny screen instead of a wide screen. So we have to scroll horizontally using these buttons at the bottom here. So on the first screen, we see the variety, but we see the uh, bushels here and, and an average line. Um, on the next screen, we have our area, moisture, and yield. And next thing we have our bushels, our total bushels, our date. And last thing we have is uh, uh, the wet mass. So that's how we move horizontally across to see more data. Now I was looking at the east half corn here. I can look at just corn harvest in general, or I can switch to corn seeding. We can switch that to, we can share this screen with as a PDF, or we can, uh, uh, share it as a SCV file as well. And um, uh, we can share that with anybody we want to, text or email, um, however we want to do that. So Analyze works just the same as uh, it does on the app or on the website, I mean. Um, lastly here, or one of the last things I want to show you is a plan tab. And so the work planner has been getting a lot of attention. Gabe showed that to you. Um, I think this is something that's going to be used quite a bit here in the next coming uh, seasons. And um, we can say that uh, it works very similar to how it does on the website here too. So if we wanted to plan tillage, we could do that. Let's say that we wanted to plan um, seeding. So uh, actually, I have some, some seeding plans already here. So for the bottom field, uh, I can go in there and... I can edit it from here, and so I have equipment in there. Let's say I wanted to, I could change that tractor if I wanted to. I'm going to actually use the the 8R370 instead, and uh, the planner's good. Parker's going to do it. Here I can put some work instructions. So here I can make um, some instructions for my, my hired man about um, where to find that pallet of seed, or what, uh, what tank I'm going to pull that fertilizer blend out of. Um, so, or, or, you know, maybe I need to uh, put instructions in there like, uh, well, we're out of 2,4-D, so we need to go to town and get some 2,4-D uh, before we uh, can do this tank mix that I, I planned here. So I can hit save. And for sending it to the field here, it's a little bit hidden, so I wanted to show that to you. At the top right, there's three buttons, and I click on that. And here's where I can send it to equipment or prioritize. When I do either of those, I'm going to hit prioritize there, so now I can slide up and down. So maybe I want to do the McPherson field first, or maybe I want to go to the east half first, and I can save that priority so your, your hired man knows what priority to, to run these in. Um, and when I hit send to equipment, it lights up check boxes here to the right, and I can hit all those and go send it to a particular uh, piece of equipment like I wanted to. So I can hit next, and there it goes. So um, again, works pretty much the same as uh, it does on the website. So you don't have to be in an office in front of your laptop. Uh, to do the planning. You can do this from your phone uh, first thing in the morning or uh, in, in the evening, whatever you want to do there. Uh, lastly, I'm going to circle back to the home screen and show you a way that we can add uh, completed work with this plus sign at the bottom. So uh, completed work is a way that we can add uh, work that's been done with a machine that uh, maybe doesn't have any kind of guidance on it, or maybe a third party did it. So, so like I said, maybe we have a third party or, or, or a machine here that doesn't have any guidance and it did some tillage. We can add that here, or, or maybe a third party like a co-op or a neighbor did some dry spread for us. So I can go to application. I can go to the bottom field here 
and say that we're going to put on some 4600. We're going to do 120 pounds of that. And the pounds is right there. And let's say that we did that on January the 7th. And ooh, that's a little bit early. Uh, let's say we started at about 10 a.m. And click done, click save. And there we go. We just added completed work to a field. Um, and so another thing you could do, maybe that's how you put your uh, your fertigation in there. So you have that in your operation center and and having all of your uh, relevant operations in your operation center uh, becomes more important when you're starting to do cost analysis and that kind of a thing. So. Last thing, uh, there's a profile button at the top right. So some of you will need to change uh, profile names or change, change, change between organizations. Here's where you get to that. So it's a little bit hidden. It's only on the home screen, and you'll see that profile button at the top right. Um, the rest of you may need to go in here to settings and notifications, and if this thing gets a little bit loud for you, you can change your uh, settings and notifications right here. Uh, turn some of that stuff down. So that is the Operation Center mobile app.